What's going on guys? Gary with Rask Group, back with another video. Today, we're going to be breaking down my holster setup. So, before we get started, I know there's a lot of people out there that are kind of economically strapped, right? Um, this entire setup does cost a little bit of money, and it is just the holster. It's not the belt, it's not the pouches, any of the other stuff. So, as we go through this, keep that in mind and understand that this was built over a period of time. It wasn't done all in one shot. And I did this, you know, it was a lot of time, experience, progression. A lot of things went into this for this setup to be what it is now. Because I don't want to, you know, sticker shock anybody that, you know, likes this and wants to mimic it. But on average depending on what prices you find, it is going to be between $460 to $500. So um, if you want to know individual prices, check out the blog post, but that is kind of what we're looking at. So to start, we're going to look at my holster hanger and the things that kind of go with that. So this is a True North Concepts MHA or modular holster hanger. I opted for this because it is an all metal construction made out of aluminum and as you can see from the back you get a lot of mounting options right there's a lot of mounting holes a lot of height adjustment you can do and overall I like the idea of having having a metal holster hanger I didn't want to risk um, you know my holster hanger snapping or breaking which anything made out of plastic if you're in a combative situation is prone to do so which I have consideration here for that. You'll see, you know, when we go through this, there are a couple things that, uh, you know, if I was really end of the world SHTF preparing for, I probably wouldn't have on here. So, True North MHA, I want to say it's about $85-ish um, on their website. So next, I have a thigh strap. This is a old G-code elastic thigh strap, just with the uh, plastic buckle. So as you can see, it's very simplistic. It's literally just a giant piece of elastic webbing. And there we go. Um, again, this is one of those items where if it was my end of the world scenario, it'd be something different. I would probably opt for a Cobra buckle closure or some sort of metallic buckle. Um, I also, I'm not really in love with this thigh strap. I feel like thigh straps are, offer a lot of kind of potential capability and then I don't think or at least I haven't seen anybody really utilize the capability of a thigh strap um, for instance I'm not sure why there are not like chem light cells here or here or somewhere or a way to attach those just for the sheer fact of um, utilizing some dead space that's coming off of your belt and holster area so that's my two cents on that next we have the QLS receiver plate I do Obviously, I have the QLS fork on the other on my holster to have the you know complete pair there. Um, this is another thing where kind of for a serious, like whether it be a duty style SHTF. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, guys. Whatever kind of like serious use holster setup, I probably would not opt for the QLS system. I think it's great as an instructor and somebody that tries out different firearms all the time. I think this 100% is probably one of the most convenient items you can use as far as holster attachments going through different guns stuff like that however it is a plastic part or a polymer composite part i should say there is some give to it so it is offering another potential failure point in your holster system so if this is a serious use holster setup that you're that you're kind of, you know thinking about building save yourself 35 bucks direct mount your holster right to the mha using some spacers because if you do it with the standard hardware the holster is kind of uncomfortably close to you. You do kind of want a little bit of offset to be able to just naturally index and go. <clears throat> and by index, I'm not saying like, you know, weird point shooting type shit. I'm talking about the ability to like just your hands naturally fall kind of off your waistline when you're reaching for something. They don't fall right to your waistline. So your body naturally goes to different places. So that is what is on the belt. <clears throat> You can get the MHA and the QLS at Brownells, I believe, and you would be close to that $150 threshold to use um, BOP10 at checkout. So 
Make sure you guys check out Brownells for your firearms needs. There's my shameless plug for this video. And now we're gonna get into it. This is my my holster. It's a Safari Land 6354DO. Um, <clears throat> I did modify it, and I'll show you exactly how I did that. But first, let's start with the obvious. Gray Fighter Gear SRC3 to hold my cat tourniquet. Um, I actually just ordered the SRC4 with the hip pouch to replace this because it uh, that one I believe is kind of more conducive to use running on a holster. This one, the SRC3 works great for its intended original role as a sling retainer catch for a carbine mounted on the buttstock or the the rail i encourage you to use the buttstock so as far as modifications i did as you can see flare out the bottom of this with a heat gun it doesn't look pretty i don't care so i removed the barrel plug i removed the light cap little thing that was in there i used a heat gun and i flared it out and that is so i can fit a comp 17 or a 34, or even a Comp 34 if I really wanted to, probably will never do that, but so that I could run it in the same holster that I do with my Glock 45, my Glock 19s, my Glock 17s. Um, it's pretty much a universal Glock holster at this point in time. Um, obviously I could clean up this stuff a little bit on the bottom, but it doesn't really bother me. But essentially to do that, you just gotta remove all the lower innards, take a heat gun, and then just slowly but surely like put whatever you're trying to fit in there down through there and then just slowly work the polymer until it kind of molds into place right it's really not that hard um i think it took maybe 20 30 minutes and then the other thing i did was you can see i modified the inside of this a little bit to kind of fit an enclosed emitter it still won't take an sro um at least i don't think so let me check actually improv video moment here so okay so here's a glock 17 x300 sro so there we are okay let's see how she does yep i'd have to take a little bit more off as you can see that holster that trigger guard is hanging out just a little far it's getting hung up on the sro and it's not engaging on the the barrel lug there so it works for MPS, acro, stuff like that. I'd have to mill out a little bit more to get it to fit the acro. Maybe I'll do that at some point. Um, and then on the back side, QLS receiver plate. I got the nub mod from OT Defense because, you know, royally improves your quality of life. And then what's hidden behind here, you probably can't see, is the Black Box Customs uh, Negative Cam Plate 3. And what that does is it completely eliminates the forward cant of a Safari Land holster. Um, gives you a neutral cant, and then even if you put it all the way to the full setting like I do, gives you a negative cant. So if I were to mount that up onto the belt, one second. So you can see in relation to the 90 degree angle of the holster adapter, how far back that sits. Um, I, I like that, I'm a fan of that. I choose to run it that way. I think um, if you're trying to have a fast draw from outside the waistband and you're not running some sort of negative cant, whether it be minimal or rather aggressive like mine is, uh, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice. Um, you're cheating yourself just because opening the access point to the holster back to where your hand naturally wants to come in from it's always going to be faster right you're using your own your own biology to to its maximum potential there you're not trying to you know over, come outward out and around and from the front and then kind of have to have this weird lean i don't know i don't know why any holster has a forward can't anymore i think it's kind of weird but to each your own right so this is my holster setup like i said depending on prices um, you're going to average 480 bucks to replicate this. Um, I'll probably be adding some more stuff to it in the future. There's some products that have come out that I'm interested to try. Um, and if I don't hate them, I'll probably just keep running them. But do what works for you guys. Like, don't feel pressure to go out there and drop 500 bucks on your outside the waistband holster setup for training. Unless it makes sense to you and you got it like that, by all means, drop the money, have a quality setup. Holsters are super important. Um, we talk about the importance of red dots division. We talk about the importance of stippling, talon grips, grip tape to our grip. However, not a lot of people are talking about the importance of a, the precision in a holster setup for our draw, right? And that is one of our most important fundamentals. I teach it as the third most important fundamental. 
No, I don't say it is trigger manipulation because in theory, if your grip is squared away to the level it should be, there's no reason why a single, a single finger pressing a trigger should over manipulate an entire hand or set of hands. So it's just physics and that's kind of what I've seen. That's what I subscribe to. You can argue with me in the comments below. I appreciate you boosting the algorithm. But guys, this is kind of a long video, but I wanted to make sure I showed you kind of everything I was doing with my holster setup. If you love it, great. If you hate it, great. Comment it down below either way because I'm always looking for feedback and I'm always looking for some sort of interaction to boost the YouTube channel. So, guys, I appreciate you stopping by. Stay safe, stay trained, stay rad. I'll be back with the next one.